One of the first arguments you'll hear against feeding a cat a plant-based diet is that it is unnatural. But right off the bat, this is a fallacy, as it assumes that what is natural must be what is best. Now obviously there are many things that are natural that are not great. Diseases, earthquakes, even people murdering one another. All natural, all not nice. Conversely, there are countless unnatural things that we do and make that benefit us greatly. Everything from transportation to toothpaste, from medicine to mobile phones. And yes, even the plant foods we eat are far from natural, being selectively bred to be larger, tastier, more nutritious, and even having different colours. So obviously, natural does not always equal good, and unnatural does not always equal bad. Let's pretend for a minute though, that we do want to feed a cat their natural diet. Well, what does that look like? A cat could never swim out into the ocean and pull out a 200 kilogram tuna. They also couldn't hunt and kill a cow or a pig or a sheep. You could maybe argue a chicken or a duck, but those birds are quite big, so I think a cat would only go for one if they were really hungry. No, if we're being honest, a cat's natural diet would be small prey. Rodents, birds, reptiles, skins, bones and other nasty bits included. I don't think anyone is feeding this to their cats as their primary diet. Instead, one thing commonly fed to cats that's definitely not part of the natural diet is kibble or cat biscuits. There's nothing natural about a biscuit. Okay, so we'll dismiss the natural though argument. How about we now consider what it is that cats actually need from their diet? Cats are what are known as obligate carnivores, which is exactly what it sounds like. It means given a natural environment, cats biologically need to eat meat in order to survive. This is because, unlike omnivores, herbivores, frugivores, etc, they can't naturally get all the nutrients they need from plants and bacteria alone. Specifically, cats are lacking an enzyme that splits the carotene found in plants into vitamin A. Because of this, their only natural source of vitamin A is the organs of their prey, primarily the liver. There's also some other key nutrients that they get from the meat of their prey like taurine and vitamin B12. If a cat is not getting the correct amount of these nutrients regularly, then they will eventually run into health issues, starting with mild symptoms like skin irritation, but eventually manifesting in more serious conditions, including liver and heart problems. That is why cats are classified as obligate carnivores. As previously mentioned, most cat caregivers are not providing a natural diet for their cat, and so these nutrients are usually being obtained through dry kibble or through processed meat from a can or a pouch. You might think at first that although the kibble will be supplemented with these nutrients, surely the processed meat contains naturally occurring vitamin A, B12, taurine, etc. Well, actually, the vast majority of meat that is fed to cats and dogs is of such poor nutritional quality that it is supplemented with these nutrients as well, especially taurine. I won't be going into it in this video, but conventional pet food comes with a few of its own concerns due to the way it's produced. Knowing all this, we should then question ourselves. If the meat-based food I am feeding my cat is supplemented for all their nutrients, is it possible to do the same with plant-based cat food? This is where things get interesting. Now obviously you cannot feed a cat a bowl of fruit and vegetables and give them a vitamin supplement. For one, they aren't going to want to eat that. Their palate is refined only for fatty, salty flavours. Even more importantly though, they will not be able to digest it properly. Obligate carnivores like cats have a noticeably different digestive system to herbivores or even omnivores. Simply put, they are not built to process plant matter, and they'd likely extract nearly none of the nutrients out of the vegetation and would suffer digestive issues. From minor problems like loose stall, to serious issues including damage to their internal organs. The only way to feed them plant-based appropriately and responsibly would be to use one of the processed plant-based cat foods on the market and to transition them onto it to allow their bodies a few days or a few weeks to adjust. Like conventional cat kibble, these foods are made of processed fats with added vitamins. In this case, the fats are derived from plants rather than from animal parts. It's perfectly reasonable to be skeptical of these foods, as some of them are quite new and there isn't a lot of information about them unless you go looking for it. In fact, I would always encourage skepticism, especially when it comes to claims about important matters like the health of one's companion animal. Research remains quite limited due to a lack of commercial interest in vegan pet foods, though the market is growing. One of the studies I found early on was a cross-sectional study on 34 cats that were exclusively fed a commercial or homemade plant-based diet, 
against 52 cats that had been fed a conventional diet for more than one year. The study sought to determine the motivation and feeding practices of people who feed their cats plant-based diets, as well as the taurine and cobalamin status of cats consuming plant-based diets. Here are the results. People who fed vegetarian diets to their cats did so largely for ethical considerations. Both groups were aware of the potential health problems that could arise from improperly formulated vegetarian diets. All cats evaluated had serum cobalamin concentrations within reference range, and 14 of 17 had blood taurine concentrations within reference range. In short, for this study at least, vegetarian and vegan cats were not found to be deficient in any vital nutrients, including B12 and taurine. I of course tried to find more information on the topic, and soon discovered the following. A review of evidence published from four studies that have examined the nutritional adequacy of plant-based diets for cats and dogs was studied by the Centre for Animal Welfare, University of Winchester. They reached the following conclusion. It is entirely possible for companion animals to survive, and indeed thrive, on vegetarian diets. However, these must be nutritionally complete and reasonably balanced, and owners should regularly monitor urinary acidity and should correct for urinary alkalinization through appropriate dietary additives if it occurs. Those interested in vegetarian companion animal diets should be aware of concerns about the nutritional adequacy of some such diets demonstrated by a number of studies over a significant number of years. However, to ensure a balanced view, they should also be aware that similar concerns exist about commercial meat-based diets. They should also be aware that, although rarely conducted in accordance with the highest standards of evidence-based medicine, the significant and growing body of population studies and cases have indicated that cats and dogs maintained on vegetarian diets may be healthy, including those exercising at the highest levels, and indeed may experience a range of health benefits. Regardless of dietary choice, consumers should be encouraged to check labelling claims of nutritional adequacy and to ask manufacturers what steps they take and what evidence they can provide to ensure nutritional soundness and consistency of their diets. As interest in vegetarian companion animal diets continues to grow, it is anticipated that further relevant studies will shed additional light on the nutritional adequacy of these diets and on the health of companion animals maintained on them. This review of the literature suggests that with careful management, it is possible to have a healthy cat on a plant-based diet. This makes sense after all, as like all animals, cats need nutrients, not ingredients. All food is broken down into its constituent nutrients before being absorbed into the bloodstream, so it shouldn't matter what form the food takes, providing it's being properly digested. However, there is still a chance that your cat won't do well on a plant-based diet. The main concern is urinary alkalinization. Veterinarian Dr. Armati May summarizes the risks as follows. Cats on a vegan diet can develop abnormally alkaline urine due to more alkaline pH of plant-based proteins in comparison to the acidic pH of meat-based foods which cats have evolved to eat. When the urine pH becomes too alkaline, there is an increased risk of formation of struvite bladder crystals and or stones. Plant-based cat food has come a long way since though, and there seems to be an awful lot of cats thriving on plant-based diets for many years without this problem. Regardless, I recommend that as a caregiver to the animal, you should check their urine pH levels regularly. This isn't too difficult. All you need is to purchase some pH test strips and some non-absorbent cat litter. You can get both of these online, or your vet may be able to provide them at a cheaper price. Try to ensure that you test their pee as soon after the cat has urinated as possible. You want to see a pH of around 6 to 6.5. If it is much higher, then their urine is too alkaline and you should have them checked by a vet immediately to avoid any buildup of crystals in their bladder. Your vet may recommend a yeast-based supplement to balance their pH level, which is actually vegan, or they may just suggest you return to providing a conventional meat-based diet to your companion animal. Now of course, with the lack of studies available and a noticeable lack of long-term studies, we're left to draw conclusions about the practicality of healthy plant-based cat food from limited research, anecdotal evidence, and our common sense. For this reason, it might be fair to consider having a vegan cat as something of an experiment. Therefore, I do not want to judge anyone who's sceptical, as I stated previously, but I do take issue with anyone who says it's impossible or even cruel, as they simply cannot back that statement up with evidence. 
If you are a vegan who is interested in the topic, but you live with an elderly cat or you have an unsupportive vet, then my only recommendation is to consider at the very least bringing them onto a diet that is half-half plant-based and what you're feeding them already. That way you've at least made an effort to lower the harm caused by your fluffy friend. I hope this video has been educational to some. I know there will be some of you who disagree with me about pretty much all of this, so you can let me know in the comments if you think there's anything that I've not considered. Also if you're on the other side of the fence, then please leave me a comment with information about your vegan cat, as I love to hear about people with companion animals who are thriving on plant-based diets. Eventually, at some point in the future, lab-grown, slaughter-free meat might become an affordable reality for pet food, and we will never need to have this conversation again. Until then, I hope you consider vegan or vegetarian pet food for your companion animal. I will leave some links in the description for the studies I've referenced in this video, as well as for more places to learn about the topic and where you can purchase nutritionally adequate plant-based cat and dog food from. That's all I have to say on this topic really. I'll leave you with these words from Cat Guardian and animal rights activist Joanna Farr. The thing that gets said to me the most is that I'm an animal abuser by feeding my cats a vegan diet, which is ridiculous. I'm vegan. I've been vegan for 11 and a half years. I have two vegan cats, Magic, who has been vegan seven years, and Yonki, who has been vegan two and a half. A chicken that may end up in my cat's food is no less significant than my cat's. I can't justify why my cat should live and many hundreds of animals should die in their name over my cat's lifetime when there exists a vegan cat food that takes that completely out of the equation.